Let's recreate the quarterback titles with text effectors. There's a new show on Netflix that you've probably already seen called Quarterback, which follows three quarterbacks from last NFL season. The thing that I really liked about what they did with the graphics package is that it really fits with the documentary style and it's not overly animated. So I thought this was a great opportunity to talk about the text effectors within After Effects and how to leverage them in order to get a look similar to that of the titles in Quarterback. There's a couple different ways to approach this. I'm gonna first start out with the basic way. And if you stick around for the more advanced way, we're gonna be outsourcing our keyframes. That way, when you go to change things out, it's an automated process that allows you to quickly change out the text without having to adjust your keyframes. So let's dive in and I'm starting from a blank screen in After Effects. All right, new comp blank screen here in After Effects. So we get to start with a clean slate. I'm gonna go up here and let's add some text. Just gonna type quarterback and double click on it. Let's make sure we are in all caps and this obviously needs to be bigger. Yeah, let's go 250 so that we keep that kind of a round number. And then I'm gonna go up here to my align and center in both vertical and horizontal. And then I'm gonna hit my up arrow three times, four times, just so it's slightly above the center line. So we're gonna talk about text effectors with this asset. And I'm on Druck Condensed Super, and I actually think I'm gonna bring that in a little bit so it's a little tighter. So the way you access these text effectors is to twirl down on your text. And then over here, we have an animate with a play button, essentially. So if we click on this, this gives us all the different options that we can use text effectors for. We can play with the color or the opacity of the color. Same with the stroke. We can play with the tracking and spacing, blur. So what we're going to play with to start is opacity. So when I twirl this open, advanced, we have a number of different options down here. But first, you can see that nothing's changed within our text. It's still exactly the same. Well, that's because our opacity is still at 100%. So if I change our opacity to zero, you see everything disappears. And the way to bring it back is by scrubbing the start end or offset. So if I scrub the start, it's going to go from left to right. If I scrub the end from 100 down to 0, it's going to go from right to left. And if I adjust the offset, it can go one way or the other. So let's just set a keyframe here on start. Let's say we go out yeah, 12 frames, half a second, and let's change this to 100. So right now, we're gonna get our text coming on left to right, and it fades on as it comes across. Well, we also have this other option down here to randomize the order. So if I click that, these are all gonna come on randomly. And you also have a random seed. So if you don't like the way that this comes on, say that you wanted to make sure that Q was the first letter that you wanted to come on, Go until you see one or two letters here, and then select this, and I use my up and down arrows. That all it took was one. We can keep going, and it's gonna show my cute. And the other thing that we can do is add an easing. So if I highlight these and hit F9, go into my graph editor here, and I fit my graph. Lasso select that one, and I'm gonna drag this out so that we start a little slow and then it picks up speed and settles into place. Cool. So the cool thing about text effectors is that you can add more on top of each other. So let's say we wanted to 
have a similar look, let's highlight the animator one, and you can rename these two. If I hit enter, this can be the opacity. If I command D, duplicate, let's change this to say position. And when we twirl all this stuff down, I actually don't want opacity down here. So I'm gonna go over here and add property position. Now that position is there, I'm gonna delete opacity because I don't want it to affect opacity on this one. And I'm gonna drag, there we go. You see the R coming down here. Let's just go 250. So we can now adjust our start keyframes here so that it does what we want it to do. If we move it in, you're not going to see that motion because the opacity is taking longer to come on. So by the time we get to showing full opacity of a letter, it's already in place. Whereas if we drag this to be a little bit longer, you're going to see them all appear down below, and then they snap in. So somewhere, somewhere a little bit longer, but not too long is probably the sweet spot. And then you can all obviously play with, maybe you just want it to come up a little bit. And then you can also play with the timing and the easing on this as well. The other option would be to double up on these if you wanted everything to be the exact same. So let's say, let's remember our 100 here. If I delete position, we have opacity here. And if I add position to my opacity and change this to 100, everything is gonna work together. These are both tied to my start position slider here. So that is also another option is that you can include multiple properties within the same range selector and have them both be affected. So sometimes that's the look that you want. So now that you've seen how that works, we're gonna move on to the more advanced version where we're gonna use expressions to help drive the animation. So first we need to delete these keyframes. Should just hit U. <laughs> and I'm gonna click off the stopwatch so I don't have any keyframes. So we want start to be at zero and our opacity is at zero. So what we're gonna do is go in and outsource our keyframes here and change up uh, how our range selector is working to add a linear expression. So up in effect controls for our quarterback layer, I'm gonna right click, go to expression controls, slider control, and we're gonna add a keyframe here at the beginning. If I hit U, make sure it's at the beginning. And I'm gonna go out to say 18 seconds and make this 100. Let me twirl back open my text here. So this opacity, which also has position on it. So maybe we should update that. Plus position. And right now we have this set to start and end. What we want now is to change our units, which is based on percentage. So we have zero to 100% for all three of these values. And we want to change percentage to index. And you're going to see the numbers change. So I'm just going to quickly change my opacity back to 100 so you can see the text. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's where we're getting the eleven. It has eleven characters in the text. And there's a better way to write this so that it automatically picks up the number of characters within a given text field. So when you go to change this, it'll automatically update based on the length of the text. So if I alt click on my end and I change this to say, Actually, let's just pick whip source text dot length. 
and nothing's going to change. But if I add a couple more letters, you can see my number increased. Let's just make it 18. I want to make sure that the text is about as big as it's ever going to be. And this is probably about right for that. So we have our slider control on this text. We have added the expression text.sourceText.length so that it automatically finds and calculates how many characters are in our text. Now we need to use the linear expression on our start to use our slider control as the driver and have it go from zero to the end. So let's alt click on our start stopwatch and we're gonna add our linear expression, which is var driver, var driver min, var driver max, passenger min, passenger max, and then it ends in a linear driver, and then we just input all of the different variables that we've set up above, and it partially fills so we can take advantage of that. So our driver needs to be our slider control. So we're saying as this, if I hit you, as this slider goes from zero to 100, the two keyframes we set, if I hit EE, -E, gets us back to our expression. So that's our driver. And our min is going to be our first keyframe, that zero. And our max is going to be 100 because that's those are the keyframes that we set. We could make those keyframes whatever we wanted. We just need to make sure that the minimum is zero wherever it starts and wherever it ends is where we want it to end. And zero and 100 is pretty easy math wise. So our passenger min is going to start at zero. So we want this to start at zero. And our passenger max, we want it to go from zero to 18. So we can make this easy by pick whipping our end because we want it to go from zero up to 18. So when I click off, it is going to go zero to 18. There we go. So it's a little stuttery right now. And all that you have to do is highlight these, hit F9, go into our graph view and fit all graphs, select one of the points and drag this out. All right, so it's a little smoother. Once we go back in here, we also need to change our opacity to zero so it works correctly. So I hope that was helpful. Hit me with any questions and enjoy using your text effectors.